Hey everyone and welcome to my review of the M1 MacBook Pro 2020. That's the one with the touch bar. This laptop is now two years old, but it is still a popular choice for many. In this video, I'll be comparing it to the latest MacBook Pro and giving you my opinion on whether it is still good today in late 2023 and going on to 2024. All right, let's start by the design. The M1 MacBook Pro 2020 has the same iconic design as its predecessors. It's made of aluminum and it's very thin and light. The bezels around the display are a bit thicker than the ones on the latest MacBook Pro, but it's still a very good looking laptop. It has a 13.3 inch retinal display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels. It's a great display with sharp images and vibrant colors, and the viewing angles are very, very good, actually. It kind of goes without saying these days that Apple laptops come with beautiful screens, uh, beautifully calibrated, so the colors are mostly accurate. In terms of performance, this laptop is powered by Apple's M1 chip, which is very, very fast, and it can handle even the most demanding tasks. I think when they first came out, there was some kind of reluctance from people about this chip, but we've all experienced how it's able to edit videos, play games, run multiple applications at the same time without any problems because they are optimized. Uh, they're very efficient, which means that the M1 MacBook Pro has an excellent battery life. I was able to get up to about 12 hours of use on a single charge when I first got this laptop. It's reduced slightly since then, of course, but this is the same with any other laptop from any other manufacturer. This is more than enough to get you through a full day of work or school without having to plug in into a socket, of course. The keyboard, the M1 MacBook Pro from 2020 has the Magic Keyboard, which is a big improvement over the butterfly keyboard that was used in previous models, of course. The keys are comfortable to type on. They feel really, really good. I type a lot, so that's really good for me. And they don't actually feel as flimsy as the butterfly keys that always felt like they were gonna fall out. The trackpad is also excellent. It's large and responsive, and it supports all of the latest gestures. So that's a plus. Now, the touch bar. It's a thin OLED display that replaces the traditional function keys on the M1 MacBook Pro. It can be used for a variety of things, such as controlling playback on media applications, adjusting system settings, and accessing frequently used emojis. The touch bar is a little bit controversial, and I found it to be a bit gimmicky at first, but now I actually like it. It's grown on me a little bit. It's a unique way to interact with your laptop, and it can be very useful for certain tasks. Now, how does the M1 MacBook Pro 2020 edition way up against the latest MacBook Pro. Well, the latest MacBook Pro has a few advantages as is expected. It has a faster M1 Pro or M1 Max chip, which are better chips, of course, more efficient, faster, a better webcam and a longer battery life. However, the M1 MacBook Pro 2020 is still a very capable laptop and it's also more affordable. So if you're on a budget, this might be the choice for you. So the question is, is it viable now in late 2023 going on to 2024? I think it is, especially if you're on a budget, like I said before. It's a very fast and capable laptop with a great display and an excellent battery life. You're gonna get it at a price that is less than some of the latest laptops, but it's going to be twice as good as those laptops in terms of the features that it packs, right? If you can afford it, of course, the latest MacBook Pro is better in every way. It has a faster M1 chip, a better webcam, longer battery life, etc. However, the M1 MacBook Pro from 2020 is still a great laptop and it actually represents better value for money, in my opinion. Usually these MacBooks from Apple have a lifespan of about seven to 10 years if you're gonna use them to the ground. My first MacBook Pro, I used for seven years and a half, and then I sold it on eBay and I got some of my money back. So they're absolutely good value. 
they're well made and they're long lasting. So actually I think the sweet spot is to buy a laptop from two to three years ago on a really good budget and use it for a couple of years or so and then sell it off to someone who is on an even tighter budget than yourself. Of course, if you've got loads of money, just buy the latest stuff. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.